So, the new Mick Jenkins album, eh? The healing component? This is quite late, but, you know, better late than ever, you know? It's a concept album where Mick Jenkins is almost like a teacher or a prophet, informing his audience of what the healing component actually is. And if, you know, you couldn't tell already from the cover, which is a huge hint already, it's love. The healing component is love. Mick Jenkins dedicated his entire debut album to the topic of love, and yeah, I, I thought it was pretty cliche at first as well. When the track Strange Love came around and I realised that this album was about love, I, I thought, you know, surely this topic's gonna tire out a bit. It's at the start of the record, there's like 14 or so tracks on here, this is gonna drag on for a bit, especially when you're hearing the same things about love, platonic love, romantic love. But turns out that I was quite mistaken. As the album unfolded, it was clear that Mick Jenkins wasn't being that generic with his approach to the common topics of the absence of love, the injustices in the world that have been caused thanks to said absence of love, and how if we loved more, the world would be a better place. You know, very cliched ideas, but Mick's way of handling these topics are what is admirable. Musically, this album isn't something to, say, bump in the whip, as it is something to, you know, groove in the tractor. Basically, it's a slower and more sensual hip-hop album than most, but if you're paying attention to what Mick is saying, as well as appreciating some of the jazzy, moody beats from The Mind and Bad Bad Not Good, then it's very unlikely that this album will bore you. Ideally, it shouldn't. And if it does, well, you know, fair, fair enough. It's not, it's not a hip-hop record I would expect to appeal to everyone. But, in my opinion, with its concept at hand, Mick Jenkins brings an excellent plethora of topics to relate to like religion, race, politics. I noticed that he references Jesus Christ in his teachings on tracks like As Seen in Bethsaida, or even the systematic black oppression on the track Drowning with references to Harriet Tubman, and even the song Bound 2 by Kanye West. Drowning is an incredible track, musically and lyrically. Musically, the, 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 the descending bass notes, doom, 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 Mick sings the hook with a deep and soulful voice, kind of harking back to the days of old soulful blues music. And lyrically, the, the hook kind of catches you straight away with that line, I can't breathe, a reference to Eric Gartner, who was repeating that quote before he died back in 2014 during an incident with police. And his inability to breathe in that moment was quite literal. But it's fascinating how when Mick Jenkins uses this quote, he doesn't just make you think back to that incident, but also links it to the metaphorical suffocation of an entire minority group. Elsewhere on this record, you're hearing Mick Jenkins provide a uh, provide some hopefulness in humanity. After all, he is making sure that his audience understands the importance of love, which, you know, to a lot of people may seem patronizing because, you know, it's a concept that's been hammered in media, like, ever since, you know, in storybooks and stuff. But I think Mick is kind of aware of that. I think there's just more of an emphasis on the fact that it's such a painfully obvious thing to keep in mind, and yet it's so often that we tend to forget to show love. I guess my only thing is, with the concept of love being so broad, I feel like maybe he could have focused in, or maybe unpacked that idea of love. Ever since Shakespeare days, that guy was like having blue balls over, proving that love was quite a complicated concept. And you know, Mick Jenkins, I know it's an album, not a manifesto, but it would have been cool to see him unpack the idea of love, and that way the album's concept wouldn't have felt um, entirely tired out by the end of the record where Mick Jenkins is just kind of milking it for all it's worth, just so he can stretch it out for the last couple of tracks. But that said, this is still a very enjoyable album. It's uplifting, it's got a positive message despite all the moodiness it has. Moody, moody, moody. And, you know, yeah, I think it's worth the 8 out of 10, personally.